What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan and welcome you to the top 10 RPG games of 2016. I hope you guys will really enjoy it. I'm going to be hosting this again. It's been a while since I've done a video so I hope you guys will really enjoy it. I hope I am not rusty whatsoever. I've been going through quite a tough time at the moment and I'll probably get into detail with that in the live commentary at some point. But at the moment, let's get straight into it guys. We're going to jump into the top 10. Let's get into it. Coming in at number 10 is Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Now I bet you one of my friends has already heard about this and he's probably already jumping and wetting his pants all the day and probably already he's going to pre-order it. But he is absolutely into this game and I have to admit I do like the combat idea of this game. But Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord is an upcoming medieval action role-playing game developed by Tale Worlds Entertainment game was announced in 2012, it is a prequel to Mountain Blade Warband. The game's release date is 2016. The game is set 200 years before Mountain Blade Warband and it takes place during the decline of the Caldrian Empire, or I think I pronounced that right, and the formation of the kingdoms that appear in the previous games. The Caldrians and its downfall are analogues or to the Roman Empire's fall. But this is why I like it, it's going back to the uh, architecture from about 600 to 1200 AD where the Empire of the Romans have pretty much fallen. The game's graphics have been significantly improved and from its predecessor Mountain Blade Warband, having better shading and higher detail models, the character animations created uh, utilizing motion capture technology and the facial animations will also be updated to improve the portrayal of emotions. Gameplay related uh, features are also being upgraded with new inventory interface and a better artificial intelligence. The siege system gameplay related features are also being upgraded as well and also being improved on from the base game from on upon player feedback obviously with a lot of things they probably could have done better. And with additional tactics being available during sieges, the current state of the game and various features are showcased during the 2015 Gamescom trade fair. So far there has been no in-depth explanation of the video game, uh, games combat. We are qu still quite left in the dark with this one. Alright, coming in at number 9 is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is the next generation evolution of the futuristic stealth action RPG series. This is the first game in the Deus Ex Universe Multimedia Project in, in an endeavor to create a multiple productions including games, minigames, books, graphics, novels and more. Set in this bleak cyberpunk world, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is a direct con continuation of Adam Jensen's journey taking place two years after the world altering ending of Human Revolution. It is implied that whatever Jensen's plans was to survive humanity was unsuccessful and mankind has become engulfed in a civil war over the ethics of human augmentation and resulting in a persecution of augmented individuals. Gameplay wise, mankind divided places a strong emphasis on player choice allowing totally binary approach to either full stealth or full combat. At any point in the game notably boss fights, can be defeated without directly engaging in combat. Missions are se selectable and their objectives can conflict with interests of both parties. Jensen serves, it really is up to you which one you serve, but there are over twice as many available augmentations than the present in human revolution and weapons can be fully customized on the fly which is great as well. So this is looking quite interesting and if you enjoyed the last game let me know in the comments down below because this game is looking just as good and let me know what you think of the trailer as well as what I've told you about the game in this commentary. Coming in at number 8 is The Division. The Division sees you play as a part of a civilian sleeper cell of agents that's trying to bring New York back from the brink of oblivion. You must establish a base of operations, a sanctuary for the people, which will slowly bring back a sense of normality. When the Division arrives this March, there's bound to be many a comparison made between the new Ubisoft IP and other games already on the market. Unlike games such as Destiny, characters in The Division aren't confined to the character class. It's all about having the option to make the character that not only fits your playstyle, but who can also develop the same abilities as other members of the team. What's fantastic about The Division is that all of this can be changed on the fly, even in missions. There are plenty more RPG elements to the game too. 
including talents, perks, and weapon modifications. Every weapon can be modded, but the higher level weapons also have weapon talents applied to them, which will increase their effectiveness in fights. I reckon this game is going to be modded to be one of the most interesting RPGs. It's got the most interesting E3 launches these last two E3s and probably should be one of the most hype games of this year. You guys let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's one of the most hype games or do you think it's just overrated at the moment after about two years of waiting? Coming in at number 7 is Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077 is based on a renowned pen and paper RPG designer Mike Pondsmith's Cyberpunk system and created by CD Projekt, the acclaimed development group behind the hit RPG The Witcher, players are thrown into the dark in the future of the year 2077 and into a world where advanced technologies have become both the salvation and the curse of humanity, which kind of sounds like the Terminator. Cyberpunk 2077 was announced in October 2012, and at the time CD Projekt Red said it was not planned to discuss the game until 2017 at the earliest. However, citing a source close to the studio, Game Reactor Germany reports it now wants to aim for a late 2016 launch. As of yet, CD Projekt Red has not officially announced the release date or a period itself. Although the game is currently only set for PC, the unnamed source claims a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One release is more than likely. The person goes on to say that it might be either a Sony or Microsoft. They might try and put a lot of money towards it making it exclusive, which I think is kind of wrong at the same time. It's, I don't think that should be tossed up at the moment. We'll see what happens. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Should they stop doing these exclusive stuff and just both go with it? Coming in at number 6 is Horizon Zero Dawn. This is pretty much a recap of what I said in the top 10 PS4 exclusive games and everyone pretty much agreed with me when it came down to it. It's one of the most eye-catching games, it is one of the most beautiful eye-catching games I have seen at E3 and it's an action RPG from the developers behind the Killzone franchise and it's Guerrilla Games. Guerrilla Games make some really high graphic games and for the PS4 system to run this it's going to be quite interesting. I hope they don't take it back or anything like that. I'm really looking forward to it. It's revolving around uh, when the world sets back gone too far into the robotic area now and has to go back to pretty much ancient times. They have like robotic dinosaurs and it's looking quite interesting and you have to steal components from them to ensure your own survival and the gameplay of it so shows at the moment a quite a depth at the combat and the combat looks like it's going to be quite full on especially with the larger dinosaurs so it's going to be quite interesting what they're going to bring in I'm not going to repeat the entire information I did last time this is quite a short think of what I think of it and now I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below what you think of the game because this one here we've spoken about now I think five times in the top 10 and now I think it's time for me to explain a little bit what I think so let me know down in the comments below because that's what I want to hear I want to hear what you think about this game so let's go on to the next one coming in at number five is Persona 5 Beneath the typical urban high school life, a group of teenagers mask their mysterious alter egos, their phantom thief side, who are they, why are they dressed as such, and what are their motives, and why are they being pursued. The story of Persona 5 will bring the thrilling new twist to the RPG genre. You will assume the role of a second year high school student who becomes a Persona user through an un unexpected incident. Having moved to Tokyo just before the start of the year school year he finds a residence at a cafe run by his parents friend and is about to get his first taste of school life in the big city the protagonist seems quite and well mannered at first glance but gives a completely different impression once he is donned his phantom thief guys what is the motivation of the alter ego we have to see guys and if you guys got any other ideas and you want to try and unblanket this persona 5 at number three put it down in the comments below because this is where you can actually put some spoilers in and you're not going to get punished. Let's see what comes up in the comments. Coming in at number 4 is Mass Effect Andromeda. It's been 3 years since the last Mass Effect game and the last 3 games were amazing. But the 4th installment in Bioware's space RPG series is finally on its way to Earth. 
Officially unveiled at the E3 2015, Mass Effect Andromeda will be unlike any other Mass Effect game we've seen so far. Giving you a whole new adventure and a whole new part of the universe to explore and get stuck in with, much of the game is still shrouded in mystery as Bioware only gave us the tiniest of teaser trailers which really whet my appetite a lot more just to see the main trailer come out soon. But we've rounded up every last scrap of information that we currently have available from the E3 and from sources on the internet, what we can expect from next year's Canada's foremost RPG studio. Here's everything we know about the game so far. Bioware unveiled Mass Effect The Drummond at E3 2015, confirming the title will be set far, far away from the long after events of the first three games. Offering exciting new worlds to discover, Mass Effect The Drummond is slated for the holiday 2016 release for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. But at the moment this is all we have, but we're going to have to wait until a bit further in the year and we'll make another top 10, hopefully unveiling more information. So let's get on to the next one which will be number 3. Coming in at number 3 is Kingdom Come Deliverance. Kingdom Come Deliverance is a crowdfunded success story about hitting knights with swords in first person. It's aiming to be a realistic RPG where leveling up and getting loot will help you out in the long journey. But there will be no magic, no goblins and no mythical creatures which I find will be a quite a good add. And your skill with a sword will determine your fate more than your stat line. This is going to be quite an interesting game without people being able to zap you with magic. I reckon it's going to be a good ad, but a lot of people might disagree with me. You guys let me know in the comments down below. That the combat has been detailed in a recent developer diary, which digs deep on not only the strive for realism, but the serious challenges encountered on the path. That's a bit tougher to work around, though. Warhorse Studios seem to be doing a pretty good job of it. As you can see in the background, the combat styles seem quite good. And... I reckon if you go a bit deeper into it and you would analyze a little bit more, if you would look at it from a plain sight like I do from a cert for in uh, digital interactive games when I've designed models of uh, medieval characters, to actually get the fighting styles that you see when they are hitting people, it's got a lot of green lines and everything like that to get the movements correct. It's quite difficult and quite impressive. So. You guys let me know. Some of you guys might be game creators as well, so you let me know Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think it's going to be quite a broad, advanced system they're doing with the combat? You let me know. Write in the comments down below. Well, let's get on to number two. Coming in at number two is Dark Souls 3. Well, we've never really added this into a top 10 yet, and we're going to have to prepare to die again with Dark Souls 3. And it's a third entry to the brutal blockbuster action RPG franchise and a dark and brooding fantasy adventure awaits us as players, we're just going to have to get ready for the uh, headaches. The embers of a once proud kingdom set the stage for this new adventure. You battle against more fearsome enemies and bosses with a variety of new weapons and magic through a mysterious land riddled with secrets. Dark Souls 3 once again gives gamers the trademark sword and sorcery combat and rewarding action RPG gameplay. Players will travel across a wide variety of locations in an interconnected world of unrelenting challenges and a deep RPG gameplay as they search for a way to survive the coming apocalypse. From a gameplay standpoint, Dark Souls 3 is making inter interesting changes to the character classes. In previous games, roles could overlap by equipping the necessary weapons and sinking experience points into the appropriate stats. Knights, for example, could be made to also function as a mage. Dark Souls 3, however, offers more distinct disciplines and provides a robust set of tools to encourage the player to make the most of them. So it'll be quite interesting what changes they have made. I only know a brief look at it, uh, but you're going to have to research it yourselves guys and if you do let me know what you find out because I am interested and I want to know if you guys want me to do a gameplay on it so, but it's well deserving I did really enjoy it and from my friend really enjoy this game too I hope he likes this being in number two so let's get on to number one what is number one coming in at number one is Final Fantasy 15 I am not a massive Final Fantasy 15 fan I did enjoy four, uh, 14 games but I'm not a huge fan in this RPG series. 
but I put it at number one because of its long going and because of its popularity. It had to go up here. It's a story about a young king sworn to defend the last crystal in the world from the hectic order outside of his kingdom. It's a fight between an ancient and modern technology and the struggle of one king to protect the old ways. This installment of the Final Fantasy is an open world role playing game that will appeal to the lovers of Kingdom of Hearts. Thanks to its action based battle system which is looking like it's improved from the last. There is a variety of different weapons available to use too and you can drive a car or ride a chocobo, I hope I pronounce it right, I'm not very good when it comes down to names, to get around the environment that is completely free to roam as you please. There's also a day and night system that cycles throughout the gameplay. One in-game day is one hour of playtime, and players will need to sleep in a hotel or camping in order to maintain their combat strengths. The monsters you will encounter change depending on, in, on the in-game time of day, and there's also a weather system. So they've added a fair bit to the game, as well as they probably have tried to keep the in-depth gameplay as they have in the first 14 games so it's quite interesting what they're going to do but let me know what your favorite final fantasy was i believe my still my favorite one is probably the first one but you guys let me know in the comments down below and we'll take it from there maybe we can do a vote on it too so you, let's see how many people like the first one but i hope you guys did anyway enjoy the video uh if you enjoyed the top 10 leave a like leave a comment and hit that subscribe button it always helps us out we'll do another one i will work on it i just had a really tough time at the moment and i will make a video for you guys about that because i do owe you guys an explanation as well as devon as well but um, i have not been myself and i hope to be back soon at full strength and as well as uh coming back with a full peace of mind but i hope you guys do understand and i will see you guys next time i hope you guys really did enjoy the video leave a like leave a comment hit that subscribe button swing by anytime you please watch our previous videos our forest series is funny as hell we do so so many random things but otherwise i'm signing off guys see ya i'm ryan <laughs>